Hello, today we introduce version 1.0 of WALIS. WALIS stands for the World Atlas of Last Interglacial Shorelines. But before I tell you what it is, let me tell you a little bit more about data. For the past 20 years, we have been living in the digital age. We all know that we don't use any more VHS cassettes to see videos, for example. But this has meant that there is an exponential growth of digital data in our world. And unfortunately, most of this data happens to be unstructured. Unstructured data is data that is not uh, included in a predefined model or it is not organized in a defined manner. And this is a problem, especially when it comes to scientific data, for example. Scientific publications, in a way, are part of the unstructured data, unless they are connected with uh, databases, for example, or data that can be accessed separately from the paper with data organized in a structured way. We have been discussing these issues within the policy community for the past 12 years. And in 2016, we started to think about the best practice to put together C-level databases. So how to give structured to the unstructured data, which is contained inside many C-level publications from uh, back in the day. Now, this is not an entirely new problem because there is a long tradition, for example, of Holocene C-level uh, uh, databases, uh, for example, those uh, published by Shannon, uh, by Paolo Pirazzoli, and by many other authors who worked after them through the IGCP projects, for example. But putting them together in a global self-consistent database, it's a really hard effort. And the first effort in this sense was done by Nicole Kahn through the whole C community community, which was funded by INQUA. And uh, Nicole, together with a lot of authors, managed to put together a global database of Holocene sea level index points for the last 20 kilo years. I was actually part of this work and I started to think about what can we do for the last interglacial? The last interglacial is a period of time which is absolutely interesting for the paleoclimate community and we know that sea level was higher than present. There are also databases for the last interglacial, but they have one issue. They are mostly single spreadsheet databases. And I didn't think that this was capturing the complexity of last interglacial sea level index points. So together with a, a number of co-authors, I started to think about what kind of a structure a database that contains last interglacial sea level index points must have. And this is what we got after multiple interactions. You see that there are lots of different connections between different tables, one-to-one, -one, many to many connections, so it cannot be contained inside a spreadsheet. Therefore, we use the relational database and we built a system around it. The system is basically a number of tools and of scripts done in different languages that are used to allow people to interact with the database at different levels. So let me concentrate on the central part of the system, which is the PHP interface to the database. The Wallis interface is first of all completely free. You just have to create a username and password to access it. But to access the data, you don't have to create a username and password. You have a link here and to visualize the data as well. So we have spam protection and you can enter into Wallis. The welcome screen is a big map with all the published data. And up here, you have different solutions. So for example, you can have a look at publicly available data. This is everything which is accessible also from outside. And let me show you one very uh, nice thing that has been done uh, thanks to funding by the Pages Data Stewardship Scholarship Initiative. It's a visualization interface built up by a student. His name is Sebastian Garzon at the University of Münster. And it basically allows to 
uh, zoom in the different areas and uh, a graph here will automatically update with the data that uh, are inside your selection area. Now you can query this data using timing, uh, using different filters or using uh, a extent map and you can also go here to the summary table you see that here your uh, selection is ready and uh, you basically can download your data clicking here and they will download it as a csv file now this is just a summary but this is very cool because it allows you to explore the database a little bit better we then have uh, an interface to basically export all the data that you have. If you click on here, you will receive an email with a well-formatted spreadsheet with uh, all your uh, data inside. An important thing to uh, remember is that every data that you put into Wallis and uh, is not made public by you, it will remain private. And probably one of the most uh, challenging parts to build, but also one of the most rewarding was the interface to insert and edit Pleistocene sea level data. So if I click on here, I can, I have all my, all the data that I inserted and then I can start inserting my own data. When it comes to age constraints, I can, for example, select U series and then I select from the U series tables, which are down here from the dated samples. I can insert U series. For example, if I want to insert a coral, I go here and I add a new coral. So this is basically the access to all the tables of the database that allows you to insert data in a structured way inside the database. Then we have a section with the help. If I click on the help, you'll see that you are redirected to a website, which is basically a read the docs where every field is described. We also have uh, another couple of things uh, in the database. These are video tutorials, for example, on YouTube, where we explain you how to do things. And a very important part uh, is um, the interface to modify or delete data. Now, once you make your data freely available and public available, they cannot be deleted by default. But if you uh, realize that there is some issue, you can request the database admins to delete the data. If you have a request for modification of one of your data, which is public, but maybe you made a mistake, you can request to modify the data. And then we will ask you which data you want to modify. You will have to insert an ID and then at this point you will have to insert the reason why you want to request and down here once we evaluate your request you will be able to see the final decision which is usually if there is no grounds for rejecting the deletions or rejecting the modifications will be granted with after a quick review so here there is the security you basically can change password or just log off so once we have this beautiful system how do we fill the data. What we did was organizing a special issue in the journal Earth System Science Data. And now we have 19 manuscripts and we convinced the 62 authors to compile data for this project. I want to take a second to thank each and every one of these authors because this database it's really their work it started as a project that was funded to me from the european research council but it ended up as a true community project and i should also say that uh, some of these authors were really really uh, proactive in suggesting us how to change things inside the database and this made the entire structure much better than it was at the very beginning let me give you some examples of what there is inside this database. We have data from subsiding areas, for example. We have data from uh, the glaciated northern hemisphere, where uh, data might be used to constrain better some aspects of GIA models, for example. We have data from uh, tectonically active sites, such as New Zealand. And uh, we have, of course, data from uh, areas that are considered more stable. There are those areas that we usually consider as a good benchmarks for global mean sea level during the last integration. So it's all in there. It's all in the database. We have 4,500 sea level index points in the database. And it is also important to remark that each one of these sea level index points is connected with one or more dated samples. This means that whenever you access Wallis, you have the indication of the sea level on one side and the age on the other side and all the geochemical values that were published inside the tables of the paper 
Wallis is and always be completely free. We released it under a CC BY license and you can access it from uh, this link. Everything is accessible. Only the interface to insert the data is uh, under registration, but still it's free. So feel free to go to this web page and uh, start exploring all our tools, all our data and everything that we have been doing in the last few months. I should also say that uh, a database is a never ending story in a way because data is always re-evaluated, data can be always corrected and data can be added to the database. A first pass of this database compared to what uh, was published before by Pedosha et al. 2014 highlighted that there are some sites where potentially there might be shorelines but we have not included them in our database. So if you have data from these sites or if you would like to do a review for these sites, please get in touch with us and we are really looking forward to collaborate with you. With this, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and especially we are really looking forward to see how Wallis will be used in the future. So please let us know how you're going to use it and let us know if you would like to see something different, something new inside Wallis or uh, if you have any suggestion for us. I'll take any questions from here. Thank you very much.